Hello boys and girls, thanks for joining us again for another online assembly. It's Uncle Robert here from FPC Kids with you today. Now before we bring today's message, we're going to start off our assembly with some lovely lively singing, so do join in. Boys and girls, today in assembly, I want to talk about racing cars. Because actually, there's a racing track only a few miles down the road for, from where I live called Kirkuson Racetrack, and I love to slip down sometime and watch the racing cars. Now, watching racing cars and motorcycle racing can be really, really exciting. The thrill of the high-powered cars, the roar of the engine, the squeal of the tires, and the buzz of the crowd all cheering, it all adds to the fun. But it's dangerous. Now to make things safer, many rules have been set in place over the years and it's the job of the racetrack marshals to enforce these rules. First of all, there's the Grand Marshal. He's located at the start and finish line, while the track marshals, they're located at various points all around the racetrack. Now because this sport is just so noisy and the marshals are spread out so much, they need to use special coloured flags to pass on important information to the drivers and to the other safety officials. Now, depending entirely on the type of race that's going on, these flags can all vary a little bit from each other. There is, however, one flag, and it's this one, that's the same the world over, the checkered flag. That means the race is over. However, long before the race ends, there are usually a lot more other flags that, that the drivers have to watch out for and that the marshals will wave. I want to look at some of them today because if you think about it, the racetrack is really a picture of each of our lives. Why? Well, first of all, as well as being great fun and lots of enjoyment, there's also very many risks, dangers in life, just as there is on the racetrack. And you know, boys and girls, secondly, racing cars in the race have a start line and a finish line. And our starting line is the day we're born. And our finish line is the, die, the day we die. And then, of course, there's all those marshals watching our progress. And, you know, it's just the same in life. We have people who look over us, watch over us, our parents, our teachers, our friends. And they all watch out for us as we go through life. And then, of course, there's the chief marshal. And in a very small way, the chief marshal reminds me of God. He's in charge of everything. He knows all that's going on and he's there standing poised at the start and at the finish line, desirous that we each would have a good race, follow his guidelines, live in obedience to him in order to receive at the end the prize and the high calling of God. And then there are all these flags we're going to look at. Let's have a little look at some because no doubt some of them will be waved at you as you race along the racetrack of life's journey. The first one is this one, boys and girls. It's the black flag. Now, if they see this flag being waved at them, the driver must leave the track and drive into the pit area immediately. They've either broken the rules or their car has become far too dangerous to continue driving. They're a hazard to others on the track. And there's a lesson here. You will not have travelled too far down life's journey before this flag is waved at you. You have broken many rules, God's rules. How many black flags, I wonder, have even been waved at you today because of the things that you've done wrong, perhaps on purpose. Think of all the trouble that you bring yourself and all the danger and hurt that you cause others. And the black flag has to be waved. 
And just as it is on the racetrack, all such bad behaviour can't be ignored. All who break the rules must be stopped and dealt with immediately, accordingly. And yet the good news is this. In life, God in mercy is always willing to forgive all those who have broken his law. To put things right, he sent his own dear son, the Lord Jesus, who never did anything wrong, to die, to take our place, to bear the punishment that we deserve, so that we might be pardoned and we might go free. That's the black flag. Let's move on very quickly to the next flag. Boys and girls, it's the green flag. The waving of this flag indicates that the track is safe. All is clear, ready to go. Drivers are ready for the race to continue. Green is for go. And the lesson is very simple. Whenever a person turns from their sin and seeks God for his, for his forgiveness, then they're ready for this green flag. They're ready to go. They're ready to advance. They're ready to take ground. They're ready to make up wasted time. And they're ready with God's help to succeed, to finish the course and win the prize. That's the green flag. Another flag, boys and girls, is really important is this flag. It's the yellow flag. This yellow flag, boys and girls, means caution. Watch out. Drivers must slow down and be ready to stop due to a hazard up ahead. Perhaps a crash or some debris in the track or a car has conked out. You know, very often in life's journey, the Christian is required to slow down and even stop. Because unbeknown to them, there are dangers, hazards up ahead. Sometimes the racing car driver can't see the hazard up ahead, but they can, however, always see the yellow warning flag being waved. You know, there are many yellow flag verses in the Bible, warning the believer to be wise, to tread carefully, as they come upon sudden and unexpected dangers. When such occasions arise, even though they might not be able to see the danger, the Christian must then trust in God and have faith in him, then, whenever the danger is past, and having learned to wait on God, they can continue on in the knowledge that the Lord knew best all along. But then, boys and girls, there comes the checkered flag. The checkered flag, I really love this flag. It's the favourite of all. This flag is seen up at the finish line, and it's waved to show that the race is officially over. The first driver past this flag is the winner. And here's the lesson. Boys and girls, the race doesn't go on indefinitely. That means there comes a time when the race is finished. It's all over. And so it is for us. Someday the race of life will be over. And we need to be ready for that day. One of the golden rules of any race is this. It's not so much how we start out that matters, but rather it's how we finish the race. That's really counts. That's all important. We need to make sure, for example, that we're going in the right direction to start off with. What a disaster it would be to be going in the wrong direction or to crash out. Or to crash out having ignored all the warning flags. Or to be flagged down with those black flags for breaking the rules. There's no prize or no reward in doing that, only shame and disgrace. I would urge you today to live in obedience to the chief marshal. Heed his warning. Focus on that finish line. Focus on finishing well and over the joy of seeing the checkered flag at the end of life's journey. For such is the delight and triumph that comes for all who give their lives and live their lives for the Lord. And so there we have it, boys and girls. We're all travelling on the racetrack of life and there are all the marshals watching out who care for us and the chief marshal who cares the most and we have all the warning flags in between. And having done what is asked of you by the chief marshal, may you in the end receive the prize and the high calling of God at the end of life's journey, at the end of the race. Boys and girls, you've sat ever so well. And before we send you back to class to do your work, let's have a little word of prayer together as we consider what we have learned today. Let's just pray. Dear Lord, we ask of thee to remember boys and girls today throughout our land in the classroom situation. And as they've tuned in to this lesson, we pray, O oh Lord, that they will have learned that life has a start. And life has an ending. And there are dangers on the racetrack, as well as enjoyment and happy times. And there are lessons to learn. And we need to abide by the rules. 
And we need to look to the chief marshal, who's the author and finisher of our salvation. And we pray today that boys and girls would see him and trust in him and turn to the Lord. For we ask it in our Saviour's wonderful and precious name. Amen.